Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. This is a great day. This is the day he has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in this day for he has done some great, wonderful, marvelous things for all of us. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. I am so grateful to the Lord for all that he has done, for all that he has blessed me with, for all that he, my God, has shined and shown upon me this day, this morning, this for these brand new mercies that he has given to me. I am so grateful unto the Lord for what he has done, for how he continues to bless me day after day, year after year, month after month. I'm not even going to go that far. Minute after minute, second after second, I thank the Lord for this brand new mercy that he's given to me, the compassion that he gives to me every single morning. I just bless God for what it is that he is doing in my life. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning to all of you that are joining. Sister Dora, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining this broadcast. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Good morning to you, Sister Dora. Dick and Mary, I see you. Good morning. Sister Nimby, I see you. Good morning. Thank you for joining. Pastor Stewart, good morning to you. Thank you for joining this morning. We're going to just Bless the Lord this morning and then get right into what I believe he has for us on today. Father, we just bless your name. We thank you, God, for you are Lord of Lords and you, God, are King of Kings. God, you are the great I am. God, there is nobody like you, Lord God. Nobody, Lord. Matter of fact, we're not even going to look for another. We're not going to look for another one, God, that will heal us, that will provide for us and protect us, oh Lord God. And Lord, right now, we're just going to bask in the moment, God, of your glory and bask in the moment of your power and your anointing, oh Lord God, and your grace and your goodness and your mercy, oh Lord God. And we're just thanking you, Lord God, for all that you have done. Thank you, Lord God, for our laying down last night. And Lord, for just waking us up this morning. Lord, you love us so much. We thank you so much that you love us, oh Lord God. And we love you, God. Bless your holy name, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for the power that you give the people of God, the men and the women of God, that we are able, Lord God, to go out and minister, God, to a dying world, that somebody, Lord God, might be saved, somebody might be healed, God, delivered and set free, God, from this world. World, God of sin and shame, oh Lord God, we praise you, God, just for who you are. So, Lord God, we thank you for this word that God shall go forth, and God, we bless your name for the people of God that shall hear it, and that it shall be engrafted to their hearts, oh God, that they might be changed and set free. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning to all of you. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. Uh, Prophet Davis. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you all so much, Minister Guyton. Thank you for joining. Thank you all for joining us, Brother Franklin. Good morning for those of you I did not greet while I was in prayer. I want to say. A Good God bless you to all of you this morning. I'm talking about being ambidextrous, ambidextrous. Oh my God, I was um in my office and my daughter, she happened to walk into the room and, and uh, she caught me, uh, caught me um, preparing for uh, one of these live broadcasts. And then she caught me, she caught me attempting to write, but she saw me writing with my left hand, as you all understand. Good morning to you, Sister Terry, Sister Jackie. Uh, uh, Sister Mary, good morning to you. Deacon Mary, if I didn't greet you, good morning to you. She saw me attempting to write um, with my left hand. Come on, greet me as you come in the room. Greet one another as you come into the room. Come on, be participators in this word. As a matter of fact, why don't you just push that share button? Because I believe this is a word, my God, that you want to hear. This is a word that somebody else is going to need to hear later on. I know they're sleeping right now, but we need to wake them up. Because this is a word that they're going to need to hear. And, and she came to my rescue. You know my daughter. She came to my rescue as she saw me attempting to write with my left hand. For those of you that are joining me new, you don't know I had rotator cuff surgery. I'm hiding my little sling here. But... I had rotator cuff surgery. Good morning to you, Sister Pam. Thank you so much for joining uh, this broadcast. And and so I'm, I'm my my right hand is not functioning right now. It's not. I can't use it uh, like I want to to the ability that I want to use it. And so I got to use something else. I got to keep moving. I can't stop. And and so she came to my rescue. She wanted to help me. But as I begin to explain to her that I don't want to make any excuses for for not doing what God has called for me to do. Come on, that's a sermon. That's a message right now. I don't want to make any excuses. If my right hand isn't functioning, that doesn't mean that I can't do what God called for me to do. My right hand is not working properly, uh, <laughs> Prophet Davis. I, that don't mean that I should stop doing what God told me to do. That there is another hand that looks just like the other one. It's, it's fully functioning. It's capable of doing what the other hand do it looks the same it it acts the same it it moves around the same just like the other one is supposed to do i put a ring on it it looks beautiful and i begin to explain to her that it needs to function 
that left hand, it needs to function. It needs to do what it co was called to do. I began to explain to her, good morning to you, Sister Miller. Sister Jackie, good morning. I began to explain to her about the word ambidextrous. The term ambidextrous, it means um, if, a, if a person is ambidextrous, it means that that person is able to use the right hand equally as well as the left hand. And, use, and it has the ability to use both hands with equal dexterity. And of course, she said that I was doing too much. I always try to have some teaching moments with my children. She said, Mama, you're just doing too much. But how often do we discount what we consider the lesser parts of us? And I'm, by no means, I'm not saying that I'm ambidextrous. As a matter of fact, there's only 1% of people in the world who are actually naturally ambidextrous from birth. Good morning to you, Sister Mary J. And there are only about 10% of people who have learned to use that ability. But I know one who is able to use his left hand just as well as he's able to use that right hand equally well as well. He's able to use that right hand. And that one is God. God is able to use his left hand just as well. God is ambidextrous and he's able to use his left hand equally as well as he's able to use his right hand and all of his power and all of his glory and all of his wisdom. Good morning to you, Bishop Jones. Thank you so much for sharing the word of God that you share with us in all of his wisdom. I know we equate God's right hand as God's right hand is power. And we don't talk about God's left hand. But let me tell you this morning that God has two hands. And, and I know that the one hand, God can do all that he needs to do. But I want you to know this morning that God is also using that other hand. And he's using that other hand to do and move and bless. And do all the things that he has called has been called to do for you. I also want to welcome those who are joining us this afternoon or this evening from Trinidad. Thank you for joining. Thank you, my friends from Bahamas. Thank you for joining. We're continuing to pray in regard for your protection, your provision, for restoration for you as well. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I found in the word of God that the Lord is saying to us, even in 1 Peter 3, and 22, about that right hand, about that, the, the place, the right place. And then he says, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him? We equate the right hand with power, the right hand at the place that you can do all things. Right hand. At Acts 5 and 31, it says, God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior. We, we, we talk about right being power, the omnipotence of God, the powerfulness of God, the right place that you are. Luke 22, but now on the son of man shall be seated at the right hand of power of God. But I also found another scripture in the word of God in first Chronicle 12. I want to talk to you just a little bit about this morning. 12 and one. And this scripture just says this is now these are the ones who came to David at Ziglag while he was still restricted. <laughs> David was running because of Saul, the son of Kish. And they were these men that came to David. Good morning to you, Sister Britt. They were rung among the mighty men who helped him in war. They were equipped with the bows using both the right hand and the left hand to sling stones and to shoot arrows from the bow. They were Saul's kinsmen from Benjamin. Man, the men they came to assist David, but they didn't just come using their right hand. The word of the Lord says they came using both their right hand and their left hand. They came slinging. They came ready to fight. They came prepared. They came to do a work. They came to do a job. That means they had prepared their left hand to do what was necessary in the army, in the battle. And so here we're talking about David. Listen, who was he was hiding. And he was hiding from one who he thought was seeking to kill him. 
But here David had support. David had support from the Benjamites. David had support, my God, from God. David had the protection of God. Even though he thought he didn't at this point, David had favor from God. David had God's right hand of protection. But let me tell you about the left hand of God that was also shielding David. Here we see that Saul had become angry with David. We know Saul, he was jealous of David. And because Saul had become disenchanted or, or angry with David, Saul sought to kill him. And the Israelites, all of Israel were gathering to him. And they came at different times, you know, for different reasons. But the one thing that they had in common at this point was they was all mad at Saul. And so the, the first part of this chapter in, in First Chronicles, and I know I'm going to have to finish this sometime later because as I began to dig deep into the left hand of God, I began to see that there are things, my God, that we don't even know how powerful God is. There are things that God is doing for us yet behind the scenes. And we, we ourselves are becoming disenchanted just like David thinking that we have to run and we have to hide because we don't know really how powerful the hand of God is. When you've got favor on your life, you don't have to run. You don't have to hide. You don't have to be in despair. Just because you don't see God's hand, his right hand on you, doesn't mean that his left hand is not working for you. We have to understand the power of, and the authority that God has, my God. So even, my God, in the, in the times, good morning to you, Sister Kelly. Brother Thomas, good morning to you. Even in the times, the most adverse times, that God is still preparing a way for David. He's still preparing that way, and, and God brought him to those who were the least expected, the kinsmen of Saul, a group of Benjamites. They, they chose to follow him, though, rather than choosing to follow Saul, the king. David was running from him. He was a fugitive. But David must have been encouraged when he learned, my God, when it was confirmed to him that God was with him and God had plans for him to restore Israel. Listen, we always seeking, are always seeking confirmation. We always want God, show me a sign. Show me a sign that you're with me, God. Show me a sign, Lord, that I'm all right. Show me a sign, God, that I'm on the right track. Show me a sign. But listen, the Lord says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Some, some of us, come on, we're left-handed, and, and some of us, uh, we have the same experience of right-handed people. Some of us, um, our left hand is where we grip things. And some of us, it's our fighting hand. Some of us, we push. Some of us, we pull. Some of us, we connect. And when we get ready to snatch something, we do it because of our, of our left-handedness. But when we're right-handed, we push and we pull. We push, we pull. And we feel stronger because of that. In our left hand, it may be weak, and our right hand is strong. But if you're right-handed, your right hand is strong, and your left hand is weak. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work. Many times, just because one part of us is weak, we may be connected. Come on in here. We may be connected in a family. We may be connected in social situations. And because we feel that one part of us is weak and we may be pulling and we're pulling and we're pulling, we feel that that, that, that part is weak and it's taking away from. And because we feel that, that part is taking away from us, we want to push it away and push it away because that part is weak. But I'm telling you, you got to be able to Work that thing and work it and work it and work it until it becomes as strong as your dominant part. 
Because the Bible says we are all built up together. We are all fit in together. All of us are important. Every piece is important. Every piece of you is important. And if, if, if your eyes should say, I have no need of you, come on, where is your seeing? Where is your seeing? Where is your seeing? The Benjamites, they came to David. They came to him. And we didn't know them before in the scripture. I'm telling you, I got I to gotta get more of this. We didn't know them in the scripture. But they belonged to a town in Jerusalem. And they came to him to rescue him. And I want you to know that God's right hand of favor was always on David. But he brought the Benjamites in with his left hand because David needed somebody to encourage him. He needed somebody to show him, just like we do. All of us need somebody to show us that even though God is still protecting us, even though God is still covering us, even though God is still giving us everything that we need, listen, God is not weak. God is not, listen, he's not right-handed. He's not left-handed. He's not weak. He's not weak. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. There's no weakness in him. You don't have to run. You don't have to hide. I'm reminded of Elijah hiding from Jezebel. God's protection was all over him. His right hand of favor was all over him. And his left hand was keeping him out of harm's way. He, there is no weakness in God at all. God is ambidextrous. You don't have to worry. You, my God, you don't have to fear. And sometimes we feel like even as people of God, I'm not talking about those who don't know the Lord. I'm talking about those who know God. Sometimes we are not even the example for those who don't know the Lord because we're running, we're hiding. Our finances are all messed up. Our relationships are messed up. Bishop, you talked about it yesterday. We're running around cussing and fussing and, and killing and murdering. We're not keeping the commandments that the Lord said. Yet, it, yes, it is the law. We're not keeping that. And those who are looking at us are saying, where is your God? Is your God not powerful? Yes. Our God, my God, your God, he is powerful. And he uses both hands to do what it is he needs to do. He uses both hands to, to wield his authority. He uses both hands, my God, to crush the enemy. He uses both hands, my God, to my God, bring me into victory. He uses both hands to pull me up out of the muck and the miry clay. He uses both hands, my God, to set me up to elevate me, to position me, to do the things that I knew you need to do. He uses both hands. My God can work as well with his left hand as he can with his right hand. Job, in, in Job 23, he said, I looked for God. He said, I, I could not find him. Many of us are looking for God. And we said, I can't find him. You, you're in situations. Some of us are in oppressed states. We're in depressed states. We're, we're in addiction. We're looking for God and we can't find him. And so because we can't find him, we go to other things. We go to other things that will soothe our need, will soothe our sorrow, soothe the things that we're going through. Job said, I looked for God and I couldn't find him. He said, I went forward. I couldn't find him. Come on, you look and you're trying to find the path. But when you look, you see the path and it's a clean slate. You see an empty piece of paper before you. You don't know the path to go. Job said, I went backwards and I couldn't find him. I'm saying, God, where are you? Have you ever been in that position where you couldn't find the Lord? He says, I looked for him on the right side and I, I, I couldn't perceive him. I looked on the left and I knew he was doing something. But I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was. But I knew something was happening. I saw him on the right because of that right hand. I knew that right hand was working. And I looked 
to the west. I looked to the left. I knew something was happening. And you got to believe, my God, that the Lord is working for you. He is working on your behalf. He is working for your good. He is working for your good. And even in this passage of scripture that we're talking about, David went to meet those men. David didn't know. He went out to meet them. He didn't know why they had come. He didn't know that God was working on the left side. He didn't know that God was working on his behalf on the left side. He didn't understand what God was doing on the left side. And many times we don't understand what God is doing on the left side. I don't know what God is doing on the left side. I don't know why I'm in this state right now. Other than to repair this rotator cuff, I don't know what else God is doing on the left side. But I know that I've got favor. I know that his favor is on my life. So I'm waiting to see for him to reveal and unveil what it is that he wants to do. But listen, David went to meet him. That's verse number 17. And David said, he says, if you come peaceably, then come to help. He says, my heart will be united with you. If you've come peaceably, he said, if you've come to betray me to my enemies, since there is no wrong in my hands, may my God of our fathers look and bring judgment. David said, I looked to the left. He says, I knew something was happening, but I don't know what it is. He says, if you've come peaceably, come on. He said, but, but if you come in to harm me, my God, who has favor on me, his right hand is still here. Don't think his right hand won't handle what needs to happen. David understood. He, he, he may not have known that he understood. But he understood that, listen, God's right hand has never left me. So if you come in for no good, no good is what you're going to get. If you come in for a fight, a fight is what you're going to get because the Lord's right hand is still protecting me. He said, but if you come in for peace, come on. Come on for peace. Because I see the Lord's left hand is still working in my behalf. People of God, the Lord's left hand is working on your behalf while his right hand is still protecting you. You better hear me this morning. Somebody feels like my God, you look into the, the left and you can't see God. You look into the right and you can't see him. Somebody better hear me this morning. You look into the front, you don't see him. You look into the back, you don't see him. Come on. Look to the left, you know something is happening. Look to the right, you know he's there. David, the Bible says, listen, he went out to challenge them. He wanted to know if they were genuine or not. Sometimes things are happening and you don't know if they're real or not. But recognize that the Lord's left hand is functioning, it's working. It's working on your behalf, it's working for you. Come on, they came as, they came as friends. They came to David as friends. They didn't come to betray him. They came to him as friends. They weren't intending to betray him. Some, sometimes, my God, people come to you and you don't know why they're coming. You don't know what their motives are. But you got to trust the left hand of God. You got to trust the power of God. You got to trust that God, my God, he's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's, omni he's omnipotent. You've got to trust that in God, that they have come to assist and to help you. My God. Then number 18, it says, Then the spirit came upon Amasa, chief of the captains, and he said, We are yours. We are, listen, I, I wanted him to say, We are of the left hand of God. We have the st same power. We have the same power, that power that's protecting you. We've come in that same power. We've come in that same authority. We've come to help you. He said, oh, David, he said, we are on your side. He said, we are on your side. Which side is that? The side that's coming to bring you peace. The, kind, the side that's coming to bring you help. The side that's coming to assist you. My friends in Bahamas, the side that's coming to assist you. My friends in Puerto Rico, the side that's coming to assist you. The side that you need. We are on your side. 
We didn't come to further bring you despair and damage. We didn't come to turn you in. We didn't come to betray you. Verse number 18 he says, goes on to say, Oh, son of Jesse, we know who you are. The Lord knows your name. He knows who you are. He knows what you need. They said, peace, peace be unto you. I speak it this morning, this afternoon, this evening to all of you. Peace be unto you and peace to your helpers. Peace to your helpers for your God helps you. So David received them and he made them captains. He made them captains of the troop. David received all of them that came. Came in the name of one who was willing to help them. My God, my God. My God, my God. We thank God for, my, for God just sending those. Listen, God may be holding them down with the right hand. But with the left hand, he is gathering up troops to come and help and to assist you. He is gathering up those who will be one in the number of those mighty warriors in this warriors, the Benjamites. In David's day, they came to help David. But there's a warrior, a mighty band of Benjamites getting ready to come and to help you. Can you see them coming? They are coming to assist you. They're coming to let you know, my God, that as the right hand of God brings favor in your life, they are coming to help you. Surely they are on your side. Where you thought they may not have been, they are truly on your side. For those of you who thought that you were out there by yourself, you had thought that you were all alone, even though you felt the hand of God was on you. You felt that the Lord was with you, but you didn't see him. You kept looking and you couldn't see him. Keep looking. Keep looking. For those troops are coming to assist you. No harm is going to come on you. No harm is going to befall you. My God, they are coming. The Bible says that David received them gladly. His numbers his strength were growing. God's hand was still on David. God's hand is still on you. My God, I'm not ambidextrous. I'm not. And even when I write, when I do something with my left hand, I may be a little slow. And I want you, my God, I want you to try it. My God, try it. And as you begin, even yourself, I want you to today pick up a pen, pick up a pencil. For those of you who are right handed, I want you to start trying to write with your left hand. And I want the spirit of the Lord will begin to flow through you. So you will know and understand that the Lord's power is even more powerful on you. And it will ever flow on you that you will begin as you write. And it may not be good writing. As, as I said, I'm, I'm not as fast. I write slow. I'm not as steady when I write with my left hand. But I can write. But I'm telling you, the Bible says the word of God is powerful. It's quick, sharper than any two-edged sword. That's the right hand and the left hand. The word of God, it's not slow. It's quick. It's steady. It's sharp. It's precise. You count on that. God is ambidextrous. That's one thing that you can trust. It's one thing that you can put your faith in. He's more powerful than you know. Those troops are coming to your rescue. As a matter of fact, I can hear them. I can hear them coming. I can hear them coming to your rescue. Father God, I bless your name. Thank you, Lord God, for who you are. Oh God, you are powerful. More powerful than we ever know. Thank you, Lord God, for hearing our prayer. For healing, God, our minds, God, our body, God. 
Thank you, Lord God, for coming in to our rooms, coming in, Lord God. We lift your name, God, and we praise you, God, because there is nobody like you, Lord, nowhere. And we bless you, God, just for who you are, who you create us to be. Now, God, continue, Lord God, to shower your blessings and your anointing, your protection, God, your provision, Lord God, your healing, God, upon us. And Lord God, we come against, Lord God, anything that comes against you, come against, Lord God, the spirit, Lord God, of low self-esteem, the spirit of division, the spirit of despair, discouragement, rejection. Most of all, we come against the spirit of rebellion, Lord God, particularly God among our young people. God, we take them back, Lord God. We decree, God, and we declare, Lord God, that we shall take them back from the hands of the enemy. We'll snatch them out from the hand of the enemy, Lord God, that he shall not have them. He shall not have their minds, oh Lord God. We come against the spirit, God, of addictions, Lord God, that drugs, God, alcohol shall not ruin the minds of our children, of our young people, Lord God, even of our old people, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, now for those who, God, are yet in the Bahamas, Lord God, those who are in Puerto Rico, those who are in Texas, Lord God, Texas, God, those who have been affected by, God, hurricanes, God, tornadoes, storms, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you shall restore back unto them, O Lord God, the things that have been lost. We thank you, Lord God, that even the joy of their salvation shall be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for what has taken place and for the word that you have shared. God, we'll continue to share throughout the day. We give you glory and honor for it in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. Bless you, people of God. I just pray that you will share this word because someone, even though they knew that God was powerful, they didn't understand just how powerful he was. And you need to understand it too. I love you with the love of Jesus. You go in peace.